record. Uh, welcome to the DEI meeting. You're now getting the disclaimer request to ask if you still want to stay in the meeting since we're recording. Um, you can turn off your camera if you don't want your face recorded. Um, on today's, I am the facilitator. I'm Sean Goggins. And um, at the end, I'll ask for a facilitator for next week. So careful how long you stay. Um, so on the agenda today is revisiting the focus areas. And are they good? Should they change? And for those of you who don't know where to find the focus areas, um, they're in the chaos dash dash dash, dash diversity inclusion. So let me share this in chat as well. If you wanted to navigate yourself to this, so the question on the agenda is, are these the right focus areas for us? And clearly event diversity is humming pretty well with the badging program. I don't know, Matt, Nick, Tricia, Amy, Matt, Matt, Nick, any thoughts on this? I honestly, I haven't had any like, um, personal problems with these focus areas. I mean, I think it's good that we're looking at them. I'm, I also put in the chat the link to the, if you go across the bottom, you know, the spreadsheet. Yeah, that's a good one to look at. And so DEI, did you want us to go to the common or? No, I, that was just, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, no problem, just making sure. So under, so we have obviously some, I guess the question, you know, I was, we have these three focus areas where we haven't delivered a metric yet, but we have two in progress. Yeah, so, so obviously, yeah, you're right. I mean, the event, <clears throat> um, the event one at the top rows. Mm -hmm. 15, 15 to 25. Obviously that's, that's pretty good, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then actually there's some changes there that we need to make. Um, and then if you scroll down like to the last one, project and community also like makes a ton of sense, right? Mm -hmm. For sure. Um, I guess governance and leadership have always been close to me. Yeah. You know, like we have leadership, we have row 55 is in governance, but then we have like a leadership focus area, which to me oh, under board and council diversity would be very much a leadership thing. Yeah. I mean, I think, so, yeah, go ahead, Matt. Um, yes. Something I've learned from um, working with other organizations is that everybody has a different idea of what governance is. Mm -hmm. and what it means um i recommend we, we just like kind of put everything into leadership because leadership is more of a blanket term for how a, something is led <laughs> right and then i look at like so then that would like move board council diversity and then code of conduct for a project seems like it should be in project community and yeah. code of conduct enforcement should be in the community. Yep. Ownership diversity is probably in the community as well. And then foundation staff diversity and leadership. Yeah. If we if we wanted to pivot the path, path to influence and private leadership as well. Mm -hmm. This might be a nitpick, but code of conduct enforcement would be um, in, in the event space uh, code of conduct enforcement is part of the code of conduct metric yeah so maybe instead of creating a new metric there we could um just kind of collapse them this is just right. ideas yeah so kind of we had done this with if you recall matt like we were doing this and i think we got it solved with event diversity do you remember like we had speaker or no i'm sorry event demographics yep so um so that that's that's kind of where i'm going where, where, where my mind is going with it like we're, it's too subtle to have it in two metrics necessarily. 
and okay. Um, Elizabeth or Amy or anybody thoughts? I joined a little bit late, so I'm just listening in. Okay. Mostly. No, I think what we've been saying makes sense. Okay. So maybe the proposal at this point, maybe the first step is to get rid of governance as a focus area and just redistribute the metrics that are in governance. Like first step and then Matt, to your point, like code of conduct, like let's do that first. And then code of conduct Uh, enforcement, like we can, you know, solve that problem next, maybe. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay. I'm putting L's and PCs kind of in there. If that's, yeah, I think this is what I heard when you were going through them earlier. Yeah. So maybe let's, could we do an action item, Sean? Yeah. To like, at least propose, at least put a PR for that change for now. Okay. You know what I mean? Does anybody want to grab that action item? Quick question, project leadership, <clears throat> not necessarily the board, but so not to use an open stack example, we will use a CentOS example. So there's all these SIGs under CentOS that aren't necessarily board members. Are we gonna include diversity of that, that leadership level or no? Like so, these are maintainers kind of? Yeah. Yeah. But I sometimes there's is, also a level above maintainer. Like the technical steering committee um, kind of a model or? If we go back to OpenStack, we have the technical committee, and then for each of the projects in OpenStack, there is a PTL, and then under the PTL, there's main cores, which are basically maintainers. So, um, you could almost say the TC is board council, and add another slash for technical there, maybe but whether we should dig deeper into those PTLs and cores maintainers. Oh, yeah, probably so. So then it would be, would it um, address your point, Amy, if like in addition to board council diversity? Yeah, like on because sheet, like there's four or five females on the Open Infrastructure Foundation board. Mm -hmm. There's two on the technical committee there might be two PTLs, but there might be 15 cores throughout the different projects. And I'm sure like Kubernetes may be somewhat similar in that they have their board council, they have an overall steering committee and then the different projects might exist. Yeah, they, have, they call them special interest groups, but it's the same kind of scaled model. So we have for... our SIGs and we have our projects. Okay. So you have, yeah, and Kubernetes may have projects as well. I don't know. Like Istio might be, you know, a project. Mm -hmm. So that way we're getting a little deeper than just maybe the higher profile ones. Okay. So Sean, could you bring up the spreadsheet really quickly? You bet. Boom. So do you see, I'm just trying to capture this. You're on 52 right now, yeah. I think, right? Mm -hmm. So move okay. So, and like this would move mm -hmm. seven, but so to your point, Amy, like what might be a couple different considerations? Like, is SIG group diversity or SIG group? Um, I think SIG leadership diversity. Yeah, if it's under leadership. Okay. And SIG diversity under community, and maybe it, is it SIG and project, Amy? Are those kind of? Together? Yeah, I would do SIG and project. Okay. Because like a smaller open source project may only have 
the project itself. Mm -hmm. It may not have SIGs or right. any other projects. So maybe. But I think it, it would be a good catch all just to go SIG slash project. Okay. Okay. So then maybe not row 52. We don't, there's not another one, at least at that. Yeah. So then yeah. this would go there, right? Yep. This would go there, right? Yes. Oops, I should have just, whatever. Code of conduct and team module ownership. What is this? Team module ownership diversity. Well, that would be SIG and project leadership. I Wouldn't it be? Isn't is another, isn't ownership for a module or a team another way of expressing that concept? Yeah, possibly. I mean, I don't really know what they meant because it's not, there's no document behind it yet. Yeah. Foundation staff diversity. I could go there, right? So there's there's something I want to uh, something I want to bring up here is that if I didn't know what a sig was, I'd be lost in what that metric means, uh, and for a long time I did not know what a sig was. Yeah. Um, so like I think we can there there might be I'm not sure if there is a good way to point to it without using jargon I guess um, a, a way to say middle kind of middle um, leadership level or something like Matt, that you don't think him spelling out special interest group kind of explains what we're looking at hmm. you might have missed that no I, I saw it okay. um, I, I just think because that, I understand um, where you just see the word sig you may not know what it is but yeah, I mean, I didn't know, uh, even knowing group. the words working group, I didn't know what that meant either until okay. I learned what a working group is. Okay. I, I just want to make sure that we're, uh, that as a group that we're allowing people to start it, that's like square one. Oh yeah. Cause we're, we're close to the subject. We see things and just go, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Matt, do you see what I did in 53? Yeah, uh, I, I don't know. I'll have to, I think I should just like listen for now. Ooh, maybe, I know, maybe this could be solved though too, like, you know, in the description and the objectives. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the title is one thing and then we just have a short, you know what I'm talking about at the top. Yeah, if you're interested in it, you look at it and then you know what it is after. Exactly, so we yeah. can for clarity there. So maybe just project leadership for the title. Yeah. Well, I think I think where that gets a little bit incomplete is on these very large projects that have a lot of little corners that you can kind of plant your flag just in the corner in a special interest group or a project. What if we call um, it project group leadership diversity? Hmm. Uh, that's this. I'll, that's my last suggestion for now. I think I'm derailing a bit. No, it's brainstorming. Well, Matt, I put it in there in column C. Did you see that? Yep, I see that. Yep. later. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Do uh, you want to try to move the rest of these, Matt? Or Well, like so I, I moved code of conduct. I just forgot to, I just did a copy instead of a cut. So oh, okay. 59 is gone. It's been moved. All right. And I think enforce, would, enforce, would an enforcement go under the, I guess, is yes, that leadership have, or community? Um. So we'll have a code of conduct enforcement for the project and a code of conduct enforcement for an event. I think it's where Matt was going with that. Is that right? Matt? I see. Um, yeah. They're kind of different to me. Well, we yeah. do have two. Right now, we do have two separate they ones. Are. Well, or actually, what? Say that again, Matt. I'm sorry. Oh, we do yeah, have we, a code of conduct at event. Yeah, actually, already. and for project down here in community, I think actually this is redundant. That yeah, one, their then, governance can go away. We shouldn't look. Oh, go ahead, sorry. 
I was gonna, maybe Matt's point, I think actually I misspoke when I said, so that like in the code of conduct for an event should be a statement of enforcement, right? Mm -hmm. And so then we don't need that. Yeah. At all. And there's no does, work that's been done on that document yet, so. Does, um, could, <clears throat> does, does code of conduct and code of conduct at event have an enforcement component? Uh, I can look now. Because if it doesn't, we should add it. I know that we question. require enforcement uh, at the in the badging project, but yeah, yeah, enforcement really isn't covered by the current metric. I don't think either. In the project, at the project level, yeah. Is there anything about enforcement? It does say understanding how a violation is reported and handled. Uh, event does not have any explicit enforcement like clauses or sections. Okay, so let me. Um, There's no explicit enforcement clause here. Although it is alluded to in the objectives and it is a released metric. feel like somebody's doing work and I should wait. I am typing an issue. Okay. Just All to right. say we need to add enforcement to code of conduct at the right. event and code of conduct at the project level. Project, yeah. While Matt's doing that, I have a question back on the, the SIG leadership stuff. So what's the difference between that metric and the inclusive leadership metric that we already released? Am I missing? something here's that metric that we already released so this one right here yeah because it talks about the leadership roles of influence board members and the question is how well is the project set up for diverse leadership which is not exactly the same as inclusive leadership. No. I think inclusive leadership is a likely precursor to diverse leadership and equitable leadership. Um, if this metric is different than the one we were just talking about, um, it's totally fine. I'm just not clear what the difference is. I am not sure either, because I'm trying to absorb a lot of stuff and facilitate. Does anybody else have a thought? It looks the same. It it does. Consistent. Like when you were go up a little bit, Sean. Like keep going just a tiny bit. So under implementation. Like leadership, like mm -hmm. maintainers, which we talked about, mm -hmm. contributors who merge with merge, merge access, access to the I mean, maintainers, basically. Yeah, kind of maintainer. Pseudo maintainer. Um, two down, we have board members. We have, yeah, I mean, this seems to cover like that last comment is weird, but. Um, what is it? I mean, I guess that would be influenced through contribution, kind of one way that a larger project might begin to welcome mm -hmm. newcomers. And I guess those are just examples. Yeah. yeah. It says example. Yeah. You know, like yeah. it's canonical. It's not a full list yeah. of everything you can think of. So that seems to me quite similar. Quite extensive, yeah. So does that move, what is, which one of these does that not move or possibly uh, make not 
necessary. Is it this one? Well, yeah, so that makes 53 and 61 perhaps obsolete. Yeah, I think it does. Because we have inclusive leadership at 48. Mm -hmm. I might push back on reframing um, on 61. I think that to me, I read that more about being about date decision making and uh, and governance, which might not always represent leadership. There's informal opportunities for people to exhibit leadership that in our, in ways necessarily defined in the governance of a project. So I was wondering if maybe there's a better way of reframing this as like equitable share in team project decision making. Just trying something to get at like the idea of actively soliciting new voices and diverse voices in the day-to-day decision-making and not just at the top levels of the project either. Does that make sense or does that? No, it does. And so I think that would then be part, if we're kind of rethinking our focus areas too, like to me, the way you described it would be a project and community metric perhaps. Like when you're talking about trying to encourage equitable voice and equitable share, I agree it's totally important um, and something that you can like actively do within a project. Um, so would you be okay with having that as part of the project community? Okay. Yeah, I like that metric conceptualization, Justin. And it is distinct from the other two metrics that Matt was mentioning. Mm. Right, you know, so. I'm kind of proud of the whole group for being in this spot where we come up with a new idea for a metric and we already got it. <laughs> <laughs> Stop being so awesome, you. <laughs> but actually, this is great. It's 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 actually, um, it feels good to kind of take a look at our released in progress considering metrics and because you know this the spreadsheet has a tendency of just being like a catch all right like people mention something and we we just capture it in the hopes of not losing it. And um, so it, it's nice to, to also kind of clean it up every now yeah. and then. All right, so why don't we take then what Justin had provided. So Justin, I'm just gonna make a new metric at this point. Or not make a new metric, but like considering, I'm down in row 73 now. And so you had called it um, equitable share of something. something like that. Equitable share and team project decision making were Justin's exact words. Um, so, so this is about uh, project supports. Yeah, it's funny we had a metric called share of voice at 1.2. Uh, I, think, I think that's that I've seen that on this list somewhere. I think it's called listening and speaking now. Maybe. Okay. Okay. So that looks like a, a move there. Does that then subvert the redundancies and extract utility out of what's left in team module ownership diversity? Yes. Okay. So that one could be removed. Um, and then code and of then enforcement. I I made a note in the minutes about it. Are we getting rid of that one and just adding it to existing metrics? Yeah. I mean, I. I just added like the issue, but we don't need to keep it here in the spreadsheet is what I'm saying. And then as you're putting that in there, there's the issue.
All right. <coughs> so then we can get rid of 58. And yeah. we're going to keep path to influence. We're going to move that up to, I don't know where that goes. So we can, well, we can get rid of this one too. Um, so what is, what is, what does path to influence mean to people? Like to me, it means moving from a membership status to some kind of leadership status, whether it be maintainer or okay. project group leader or something. And that's definitely something that'll vary just for different communities. One thing I'm thinking about is the Mozilla open source archetypes report and how it breaks up governance types for different kinds of participation mm -hmm. in open source. So you have projects that might have steering committees or very formalized governance. And in those kinds of projects, you could ask questions like, how long does it take for someone who first enters the project, like first get commit mm -hmm. to entering a role in okay. In the project, others like these, how what might be called like these house plant projects, where it's, the lines are a lot fuzzier, it'd be tricky. Like how how would that apply to those kinds of projects where leadership is not as well defined? I'm do not they, sure. Um, in the example that you gave, do they spell out how to like move into those roles, or is it more like a reflection on how people did it? It's more like a reflection. And okay. I just dropped a link to the report in the Zoom chat. You'll actually see, you don't have to read the whole, it's like a 40-ish page PDF, but they have, they summarize the key categories at the top, the archetypes described. Oh yeah, um, I've seen these before. Okay. Yeah, this is yeah. Mozilla Tech Strategies, Carl Fogel, yeah. those, those. Gotcha. I just mentioned it as it, I think it helpful to think about what like path to leadership means. I, I think it's relevant to look at as a metric, mm -hmm. but knowing that it's going to, it's going to be very hard. Maybe we could break that down into two different metrics just because, and I don't know, I just see that being a really big bucket to try to measure, but. Yeah, I, I think, I think it is because a lot of projects could fit into one or more of these and also I think you have to look at activity level size of community because scale is a big factor in whether or not, for example, there are special interest groups. <clears throat> so I'm going to put oops, row 55. Um, I prefer the phrase path to leadership. Mm -hmm path to influence that just sounds sort of <laughs> that's yeah what are you tweeting <laughs> so, what are my twitter contributions to this project and then justin you had said maybe breaking this down into a couple different things what were the two what were the two in your head what's the difference yeah, it might need more brainstorming i don't know if this is the right i don't know i'm trying to remember what else we have on the agenda for today or if there's other not stuff a ton we have one other thing we've got time to flesh this out if you want yeah, just maybe to brainstorm, like, I don't know if it would be helpful to try to have a single metric to capture all the different ways path to leadership that we could measure in this, or if it makes sense to break this down, like in a like steering, like in projects with steering committees, this is like a path to or, or, or organized or, or formal or semi formal. I don't know. Okay. So, so Kubernetes, for example, does something called laddering, where they give you an explicit way of moving from initial contribution to some form of leadership. And so one thing that we could potentially measure on larger projects is the presence or absence of these kinds of contributor laddering into leadership programs. Um, but on mortal projects, projects without tens of thousands of contributors, you have you know, different scales of problems. Like, how do I just get three more contributors to put stuff in my project so it survives? Uh, you know, so there, there are these different spectrums of what the path might look like. <clears throat> so project scale, has a, there's a functional, like an equation kind of, like there's some function of scale and size of project that 
sort of triggers whether or not you have special interest groups and projects within projects and that kind of thing. <clears throat> okay. And I would imagine as your project grows, it's probably pretty smart to provide as many paths to leadership as you can so that you keep new contributors uh, engaged and give them something to strive for. To guess. Maybe I'm actually curious. I know Nick has done a lot of work in the, I think it's the rocket chat community. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious just from that perspective, if it makes, if these, some of these thoughts on like governance and paths to leadership make sense in that context, or if you're, if you're on microphone, I, I don't know. Nick may not be a microphone, his microphone's not working. Nick, if you think you're, we're not hearing you, just I'm um, sorry. If Nick, if Nick's voice comes back and he wants to respond to that, I don't know. Okay. So this is so what we've, at least in this section of the spreadsheet. I mean, what we've functionally done is gotten rid of governance as a focus area. Yes. And we exactly just, everything that was there and we felt could fit in leadership or in project community. So they were like code yeah. issues. So and this probably is leadership and governance. So that would be question? just for the category, just leadership and governance, just trying to be a catch all to the decision oh, yeah, making. That's, that's a good idea. Because those things do go pretty hand in hand. And that way, that way we don't have to justify our separation of them. We can just <laughs> avoid that confusion. <laughs> Boom. And I, I made it that's still under a pull request. It's an action item without a name on it yet to do the repo level change. So you want to volunteer to do the pull request? Well, now that we have it, I mean, I think, I think I can do it. Okay. I was just looking at, I mean, while we're here. Yeah. So we're, uh, we're we'll here. Should we back, back spreadsheet? Okay. Yeah. Like, so we have, <coughs> I like the change actually. Mm -hmm. it's, I, I, it's like a academic paper, right? Like working towards simplicity is yeah a good thing. Um, can you scroll up a little bit, Sean? Mm -hmm. So we have, as you pointed out, these like 27 through 45, where we have like no delivered no metrics. No. So like what, what's happening right now is we have event concern, DEI related concerns with events, with projects and with leadership governance. And those, those three categories make a ton of sense to me, right? Like we think about DEI and these kind of distinct areas. Yep. And so like, I mean, that whole set right there falls under project and community for me. And that perceived value, I mean, that's probably, a, so probably goes in the yeah, that, working group. Yeah, that's probably not a DEI metric. Um, I mean, certainly the, these are aimed at both contributor characteristics and the community diversity and how people work with each other under three and four, I think. So, so these are ways that we are facilitating or not facilitating diverse contributions. Um, I mean, they, and, but they really, maybe they haven't been developed because they kind of lean towards things that you could measure and possibly measure really wrong and draw really flawed conclusions from. So mm -hmm. I could hook up Augur to every single one of these as I conceptualize them, except possibly perceived value, because I don't know what that is. Um, and, and measure this quantitatively using different algorithms. And are we not developing these metrics because we're concerned that we could easily quantify these things and point you in the wrong direction with an algorithm driven approach? I don't I'm know. asking, I don't know. I don't know the, I mean. It's a, it's, I'm looking at the thing, it, these are different characteristics for these metrics than I see in the other yeah focus areas because unlike most of dei i could derive a lot of this from analysis of trace data 
if that's how the metric ends up defined. So what what is your question or your statement? <laughs> my, okay, my question is if we, I think, so my state, I guess my statement is that three and four look like distinct uh, things that speak to acts that individuals can take within communities that we can measure. Mm -hmm. Community diversity as a heading looks like it could be put under community. When I looked at contribution sentiment and contribution style in particular, these are two metrics that um, probably fall under communication inclusivity more than community diversity. Because I think those are about communication. So 31 and 32. Yeah. So your current proposal is at least like <laughs> proposal, like your current thoughts Ish. are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, like 31 and 32 might be better suited under communication inclusivity. So, yeah. That's how they seem to me. Perceived value. I don't even know. I don't think it belongs here. And I think it's been addressed by value, frankly. Contribution type and demographic diversity. I mean, we have, it's funny because we have like event demographics as a metric and we, do we have project Looking. demographics? We don't. We have demographics generically characterized. And I think I remember this discussion where this demographics would have a project focus, focus, or uh, or an event focus, and maybe that's not captured here. So maybe I'm gonna bring something else. But you could do this for attendees, and you could also do this demographics for a project. So this could be filtered by event or by project. Okay, so go back to the spreadsheet. Yep. I kind of like, personally, I honestly like keeping project things and event things kind of different. Okay. So they just, they, like when mm -hmm. I think about event demographics, mm -hmm. that feels different to me. It is, it's temporarily limited to the event. Yeah, right? it has speakers and it has attendees. Mm -hmm. it just, it, uh, the dynamics mm -hmm. are different versus like the group that is on these calls. Right weekly basis and issuing PRs. So like in the way mm -hmm. that I would query demographics mm -hmm. events is kind of different than the way that I would think about doing it with a project. So I, I like yeah. and same with like code of conduct. Like how you enforce a code of conduct in an event is different. I mean maybe it's not different. You send an email mm -hmm. and yeah. um, explain what happened. Um, I don't know, just they like when we run chaos con we have a chaos con code of conduct mm -hmm. with a reporting structure to the team i think i don't remember i don't know they just seem different to me it, it, yeah i mean i think of certainly how you would measure it is different i think you you would have to do with events you can get pretty good survey data that's almost the whole population of an event I think you're significantly less likely to have the entire population of a project for which you have demographic information, which can alter how you share it or track it. Um, depending on the scale of a project, what you really can openly track with demographics will change because people become identifiable if they are too scarce in their category. Here we call them there. So then. Not that, but there. You know what I mean? Okay. Yep. And then if you scroll back up, demographic diversity could go away, at least at this point. It's the same thing as demographics that are evident yeah. at events and. Yeah. Agreed. And perceived value. I don't know. Was... I want to get rid of it. I don't think, yeah. Thank you hurting my head and then contribution sentiment 
that seemed those last two seem like communication items. Contribution type. I'm not sure what that's getting at. Is it getting at different people from different demographic categories are making different types of contributions? Uh, or is it, um, I'm not sure what contribution type is aiming to get at. I would suspect it's like <clears throat> contributing to chaos con mm -hmm. versus contributing to auger mm -hmm. versus this D screen share. So recognition of communication or contribution type, you know, or equitable recognition of contribution types. I just, I bet it's like the different ways that you can contribute. Mm -hmm. Probably. So do we have that anything like that in project and community? Um, there's some things like issue label inclusivity, document accessibility, chat platform inclusivity, documentation usability. Would you be okay if I recommend um, we did move this? Mm -hmm. Just for the time being, the community. That would be it. Exactly. I think, yeah, I think for the time being, that's where I would put it too. Okay. So then that goes away. I'm just going to go down here. So then, all right, so I, I think this was huge progress. Yeah, major um, fleshing out. I think it's easier to understand five um, focus areas instead of seven. So what I'll do is I'll issue a PR at the GitHub repo, and yep. then there's gonna be like the cascading. We didn't, I don't think we moved any released metrics. Or did we? No, we didn't move any released metrics, I don't believe. Okay. Maybe we did. <laughs> no, uh, maybe we did. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it's, uh, I'd have to go back and look. Okay. Actually. So why don't I, I'll just issue at least a pull request. I, I can figure it out based on the pull request I issue mm -hmm. for the, just for the GitHub repo. And then we can, maybe next week start taking up like mm -hmm. the effects that this will have in the metrics release. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Yep. Okay, cool. Um, the last thing on the, well, there's two other things that well, one got added, I think, but we have five minutes left. There's an event demographics question, um, determine diversity. I don't know whose item this is, if someone can speak to it. Uh, yeah, or if that is left over from the past. I think it's, I think this is pretty much good to go at this point. Okay. So if you go actually go back to the spreadsheet. Yep. Okay. So we scroll up. Okay. So speaker demographics and attendee demographics mm -hmm. in 16. Yeah. And just they've just kind of become we're getting rid of those and adding mm -hmm. in demographics or merging mm -hmm. yeah okay that event. makes a lot of sense and so let's let me um where is okay um i guess uh, I, I guess this is for me to to issue some pull requests and stuff like that. Yeah, if you want to change that. Okay, I'll do that. Okay. So I may not be able to do this for a couple of weeks because I really need to take. <laughs> yeah. Why don't, I why don't I take why don't I take this action? I, I mean if uh, if you want me to take the, I mean, I can follow what you did on the spreadsheet, Matt. Do you want me to take this action item so you can have? That would be super helpful. Yeah. Uh, SG, which is basically to um, move those two metrics. Well, those just, they go away, basically. And then there's the new metric that is, 
Um, I'll find it here. As demographics. Yes, and so here. Okay. You that's event demographics. Ish, event demographics. Know. I'll work this. I'll work these action items out and get them as PRs before the next meeting, Matt. That'd be helpful. Thank you. Thanks. You see, I put that in there. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, so I think, um, and somebody added interesting things about inclusive metrics here at the bottom with the two minutes left. How yeah, to measure that was me. inclusion in the workplace. Yeah, it was just an interesting article. Um, and I think we actually have metrics that touch on, there was, they, they offered seven at the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there's three though that we don't really talk about a whole lot, which is trust, psychological safety, and um, fairness. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to kind of throw those out there. Um, I, I'm really interested in trust, especially since it uh, kind of bridges the gap with that SCMS metric, because trust was a big piece of that. Mm -hmm. So I was going to maybe open up uh, or start working on that metric if, if that would be okay with the group. Totally okay. I'm just going to link those that link explicitly. So would that probably be measured like, you know, you know, that survey, the self-reflection survey, something like that kind of tool? Mm -hmm. Do you trust? I think so. Yeah. yeah. Do you trust the, the communication? Like, do you know, do you trust the community? Do you trust, right. you know, what they're saying is, is factual and accurate? Sure. And so I think it could, it could cover um, documentation and also any kind of communication from either leadership or other members. Okay. Um, yeah. I think these are great ideas. I'm really glad that you brought these up as new metrics to develop, Elizabeth. What is the fairness one about? Uh, it's about, I think they talk about it in the article, but it's- Fair um, treatment is what they call fair it. Fair treatment, yeah. yeah. Which is a little bit different than, you know, um, equitable. It's, it's more about perception. So that would also kind of, I would assume be part mm -hmm. of a survey at some point. Mm -hmm. Because I'm wondering too, you know how this will only make sense to Sean and Elizabeth, but we're working with a tool. I'm yeah, yeah. hundred percent. I was like, oh, that was number one on the list. So yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I was thinking that too. Um, all right, we are at time, folks, and I'm going to be strict since we've all, many of us, have been on calls for a while, while today. And um, thank you for your contributions, yeah, and for today. hope to see you next week. I'm able to facilitate next week since we don't have time to find a new facilitator, but I won't be available the week after that. <laughs> so the week after that, you have to get someone else, but All next right. week I can do it. See y'all. Hey, Take care, Carol. Uh, um